1964, you served in Vietnam. That's me? wrong. Okay. That's wrong. I got that misinformation. Um, I knew I was going to be drafted, and uh, so I took another year hoping that I'd work as a photographer in the Army. And uh, so I signed up, and the only, I signed up on 42nd Street, <laughs> there's, a, there's a place there, might as well be 42nd Street in there. And uh, then I found out that uh, it didn't look as though I was going to get photography, because once you sign and raise your hand, you know, that's it. You're a general issue, and you're, you're under military law. And, uh, but luckily for me, and tragically for someone else, somebody in Washington State got killed in an accident, so that I got that slot. And so I went through uh, basic at Fort Dix in the wintertime. It was so cold we couldn't even go on bivouac because you couldn't uh, hammer the tent pegs in the ground. <laughs> and uh, uh, what happened there too is uh, that I got pneumonia in basic training. I got pneumonia going out in my skivvies to get a popsicle. <laughs> and then you're working round the clock. And, and uh, I, I was very, very sick, but I didn't have a temperature. I didn't have a fever. So I, I went out with full combat gear on. You know, this was 61, so we had the M1 rifle before the uh, M15, 16, and, and other, other weapons came out. And uh, I had to wait until I, I got a temperature of fever. And then I was able to go to the hospital. And so I called my mother from the hospital, and I said, I have pneumonia. And you know, she said, yo, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? And uh, so she visited me at Walton Hospital. But I was determined to get out. I had to get out in a week because I'd have to do basic all over again, then lose the opportunity to go to Fort Monmouth. And that was in my MOS, in my military occupational status. But um, I got out, because I was, I was heavy smoking, I was smoking even in the hospital. <laughs> and some of the guys had to basically be put in these rubber troughs uh, filled with ice to bring down the temperature. My fever wasn't that bad. And so I determined, I have a great deal of willpower, I determined to get out. And so I came back to my uh, unit. And uh, so I had to spend two or three days with the first sergeant. And uh, first sergeants are incredible because uh, you know, they're all military, uh, they're career officers in this case, non-commissioned. But this guy was incredible and I really liked him a lot. But he had me, I couldn't, I couldn't even breathe, and I was very, very weak. And he had me uh, stoking the fireplace, getting wood, you know, throwing out the ashes. And then they had the, the last week of, of basic is the test. And you have to, there were maybe, I don't know, 14 or 15 stations. You have to throw hand grenades, uh, you know, go under bullets, you know, under, under barbed wire, which I started to do. But I decided uh, a bunch of weeks, uh, and so that I would, with the full combat pack on, with my rifle, and being very, very still very ill and weak, I would tell every um, soldier, and they were like, eh, for two years they were just doing this, they can care less half the time. I explained my story, and they, then I didn't have to go through the the procedure. They would just tick me off, and I go into the other station. And so uh, I must have done a good job because um, in graduation after the parade, um, I was commended. I came out, of all the history of Fort Dix, I came out about the 200th, <laughs> the, the grade. So I said, oh, now I'm really in trouble because they're going to keep me in an infantry outfit, you know, because I'm so good, supposedly. But no, I, I was sent to, uh, I came out first. Uh, when I went to Fort Monmouth, I was first, first in my class because I knew about photography. And um, I figured if I was first in my class, I'd probably go to Europe. But the uh, Army doesn't work that way. You know, someone is just, maybe it's alphabetical, and they, they sent me to Fort Hood, Texas, near Waco. And, um, but that turned out great. I was able to go to Germany twice. 
um, on maneuvers. I spent a year and a half on maneuvers. Um, th uh, we, were, we had a, a mobile photo unit. And so that was a two and a half ton truck with a, actually a, a dock room on it. And so our job, mostly I did PIO work, with public information, and um, then I did field work, and drones was sent up, we got film from the drones. That, that's why I was connected with intelligence, and I had a clearance because my job was to supervise the other, other soldiers, I was a spec five, and um, get the film to them, and, and they would you know, know what they were looking at, infrared film. And basically, that's what I did. A year and a half, I was on maneuvers. Mel Brooks's son, Max, was at one time my officer. So <laughs> we were in the Mojave Desert, and he would sneak out and go to Vegas. Uh, it was very, very wild in Germany, because uh, we had to draw water. Um, in the desert, it's a different situation. We have uh, containers of water. But there, we had to draw water. And so he chose a nudist, being there, a nudist camp. And so that, that was funny. And I, I, I did, uh, it was very, very traumatic, uh, especially <clears throat> the time where the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we were in the Carolinas, and we were on red alert. That means you couldn't get any, any information, couldn't hear the radio, and we knew this maybe be the, the end of the world. And so that was very, very, very crazy time. And, um, and when it became known that it was over with, everything was settled. Uh, we convoyed it back to Fort Hood. And uh, it was a, a great, great relief. Uh, but I actually volunteered uh, before that time for Vietnam, not because I was so gung-ho. I, I disagreed with the, the war, uh, like everything else. Uh, but. I wanted, being a romantic that I am, I wanted to go into Vietnam to make, hopefully, masterpieces of combat photography. <laughs> so, and, and I was, uh, I was uh, getting out of the service. You know, basically, it was my, my last week. And uh, I was turning everything in. And uh, um, then orders came down. But I was really uh, in the process of being discharged. But if it was uh, basically at a later time, that may have all changed around. Uh, but I didn't. The, the most important thing about that time, though, was uh, when Kennedy was assassinated, I, was, I knew I was up for a three-day pass. And so luckily enough, I, I knew the officer um, that, that day uh, that was in charge of, of the battalion uh, that could give me a pass, and I took it. And I got in my car and I drove to Dallas. And I had my military cards with me. Uh, I just had a, a camera with a couple of rolls of film. And I just wanted to be around uh, a, a great t aspect of history. And it was amazing what was happening. People were talking about the, the uh, book depository building. I went in there because I had my, my, my uh, credentials with me and uh, looked around, I took some photographs. And, um, and I knew I wasn't photographing, you know, like great stuff, but for me it was just, I, was, I wasn't even touching the, the, the ground. It was very, very great. And they had all kinds of bottles uh, filled with notes about the, the dead Kennedy, and uh, uh, a lot of Texans really didn't like them, you know, of course. And uh, so, I really enjoyed just walking around, seeing uh, uh, history in the making.